Hello you multi, magical metallurgical moulded mash tans. Little bit of a malt mention tongue twister, but I managed it and all credit for that malt mention to Willem Killian9563, who has provided the malt mention as a prelude, a precursor to Ralphie Review 1016. And this is the final review in a series of which I give a personal take on the winners of the 2023 Online Scotch Whiskey Awards, which is oswa.co.uk, which you'll find a link to just down below. Um, it is the only fully transparently democratic vote counted whiskey awards in the world, mainly referring to Scotch whiskey, what's Scotch whiskey, um, but having guest whiskies from other parts of the world. And um, the observant of you may be thinking, hang about Ralphie, um, you've now reviewed seven in the, this series and yet there are nine categories. Uh, and that is perfectly true. But the two final categories, the first one is the Best World Whiskey, which was won by Wild Turkey Rare Breed, American Bourbon, which I've already reviewed, so I'm not reviewing it again. And the final category is the Scotland's Best Distillery, which of course was won by Springbank. And to be honest, I've said as much as I want to say about Springbank for the time being. There's no more to be said. It's pretty self-evident. So this is the final um, in my series of reviews of the winners in the 2023 Online Scotch Whiskey Awards. And this particular category um, is the best independent bottler. And it was won by Signatory. <coughs> Excuse me. Pour a wee dram. Me glass of water. That's better. <coughs> I was getting a wee tickly cough there. It's all the excitement. I've had this bottle open quite a while. <coughs> I think that's, yeah, that's the end of it. <coughs> no, there's not. There's another cough coming. <coughs> Yeah, we're all right now. <clears throat> it's one of these tickly coughs that you get when you're briefly in a smoky environment, <clears throat> which I was recently because I lit this fire down here and there was a wee down gu gas gust of, of wind outside the bothy and it blew the smoke in my face. <laughs> hey, it's tradition. A face full of carbon emissions. I'll get over it. I'll get on with it. So long as I'm responsible about it. That's the main thing. It's just like my consumption of fine single malt Scotch whiskies. Got to be responsible about that. <clears throat> and one of our biggest responsibilities is to seek out quality. Quality that matches our palate. So in this review, I'm going to review this particular version of Signatory Vintage independent bottling and it's of a Mortlach, a 15 year old Mortlach, a combination of four casks starting with 302169 and finishing with 302240 and uh, there were 728 bottles out of this small batch so it's a very small batch and it's from Bourbon Hogsheads distilled in 2008, bottled in March 2023. I bought it shortly after it came out because I thought, you know, I love Mortlach. I really do. It's a savoury whisky. It's a bit like Edredur. It's a bit like Benromach. It's a bit like Springbank. A bit like Kilkerran. A bit like Glen, um, Glen Scotia. It's got that natural complexity <clears throat> and range not just of whiskey related flavours, 
but the sensation intensity is quite powerful. Uh, so what you have is quite a savoury umami single malt signature. Mortlach is famous for it. It's a fascinating distillery which nobody ever visits because it doesn't. it's not open to visitors. The space around the distillery is too small to accommodate visitors' car parks. The access is too narrow. The Mortlach Distillery is a small distillery tucked away, nestled in a river valley. It, you don't even know the distillery is there until you're literally at the front gate and then suddenly it's in front of you. The distillery was set up on the site of old illicit distillation of hooching <clears throat> and the reason the distillery was set up there was because of the feng shui the provenance the chi of the area the lay uh, l e l e y the lay of the land in the landscape um, and it provided a phenomenal identity which in building a formal distillery in the site of the original hoochers lair um, it has been preserved it has a peculiar and eccentric setup of stills, including a very small secondary still called the Witchy Still, of which they make a huge song and dance about it. But to be honest, I wonder how much of a part it actually plays. Is it more cosmetic than anything else? It definitely does play a part because it it adds a layer of inefficiency to the process. And I'm sure that the distillers have attempted to uh, produce Mortlach without using a small, pesky little inconvenience still um, and discovered that it changes the flavour and not for the better, definitely for the worse. Making whisky is not straightforward. There's far more to good whisky than meets the eye. Um, and that's not just about the skills of the whisky makers. It's about the provenance and the uniqueness of the circumstance of the individual distilleries. And Mortlach do this wonderfully well. Now, you can buy official bottlings of Mortlach, but I must advise you, pre be prepared to pay a lot of money and be prepared to be disappointed particularly with a 12-year-old. If you're buying a bottle, official bottle of Mortlach, you'll get something which is very tactfully presented, very cosmetically presented. Um, but the 16-year-old is the one you need to start with if you want to go anywhere. It is chill-filtered, so the whiskey has been denatured and sanitised for you because it's an official bottling which is designed more for the passive consumer who wants to consume the brand than it is for the proactive whiskey drinker who wants to consume the integrity of the experience. This is why independent bottlers are so valuable and you won't find the whiskey industry saying much about it, but the strong presence for a long, long time, for hundreds of years, of independent bottlers in the Scotch whisky landscape has added considerably to the enhancement and to the delivery of Scotch whisky, particularly single malt Scotch whiskies, global reputation. I recommend if you're just starting in whisky, start with a proprietary, easy access, 40 or 43% chill filtered available product. It's accessible. It's been pre-diluted for you. It's been engineered to be safe and reasonable on your senses. It won't frighten you. Because if you just dive in the deep end and you buy a bottle like this, 15-year-old 2008 vintage Mortlach, <clears throat> and you really don't have much experience in whiskey, you're going to be in for a shock. Trust me. I've been there. <laughs> so this is my working example. Why, why signatory? Of all the independent bottlers out there, why signatory to win the award in the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards 2023 as the best independent bottler? One, sheer range of what they produce. Two, the consistency of integrity bottling and transparency 
of that bottling. It says on it, natural colour. It says on it, non-chill filtered. This is a full disclosure label. They are giving us information, not flannel. This is so important. You do not see picture labels from hand-picked artists that have been brought in and they put a splash of colour over it and say this unique photographer, this unique artist, this unique creator has, has honoured us by providing to these labels, blah, 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 blah. This isn't a Maison de Whiskey piece of theatre. This is an experienced, no flannel, practical whisky provider providing a tremendous variety and range of whisky brands at accessible prices. Now, sure, their older whisky is getting more expensive, but all older whisky is getting more expensive. So, all kudos to Signatory. They are very well thought of, despite the fact that they don't do any advertising whatsoever. This is one of the signs of an in-demand brand which is worth looking out for. It's the fact that you don't see them advertising. Any brands that advertise are the ones who need to advertise. They need to spend the money to get the attention and this will be reflected in the prices they charge. What have we got here with the Smortlach? <clears throat> Ex-Bourbon. Deliciously light looking colour, very refreshing, very honest. Transparency, nose. Sweet and sour bitter. It's the sensation which hits the nose first. It's intense. It's very lemon grapefruit, combination of lemon and grapefruit, bitter rind, aromatic citrus and just a tiny hint of green savoury. So what happens in the taste? Ooh. Intense. Some of you remember Bailey Nickel Jarvie. Despite being bottled 40% chill filtered, it has become a classic traditional Scotch whisky blended Scotch. Great price, great savoury, sweet and sour, intense, untamed sort of character. And it's sorely missed, missed. it really is as a brand. It's this is very reminiscent of that. That sheer unapologetic, untrammeled intensity. Um, grapefruit rind, a touch of pickled pineapple, a very distant hint of banana, but essentially intense citrus and citrus rind graininess. Cereal notes. When you add a teaspoon of water, five millilitres, that's what I've done, and you leave it a few minutes, the mist will appear. Once you see the mist appear, starting to appear, you know that it's softening down, opening up, and the water is doing what it's there to do, and that is release the complexity of the vent, which is locked up in 46% alcohol. As a cask strength, this would have been absolute rocket fuel in the palate. But it's been brought down to something more manageable. But it's very intense. There's an awful lot going on for the strength we're getting. This is completely unengineered. As it is, straight from the cask, take it or leave it, warts and all, demanding, aggressive rewarding and dramatic. And this is what independent bottlers are all about. 
Once we know a brand or recognise a brand, say Glen Morangie or something, you know, we'd look at the independent bottlers and we wouldn't find it because it's just not available. It's the same with Bill Blair. You very rarely see Bill Blair now from independent bottlers, but you'll see Glen Elgin. You'll see Ben Rinnis, another good example. You'll see single malt brands you've never even heard of because official bottlings just don't even exist. And this is what the independent bottlers do. They give you this absolute no frills authenticity, which without any need for any theatre or ambassadors or messaging or advertising or super branding or boxes and containers, is by far the best ambassador for Scotch single malt whiskey's reputation as you're ever going to find. Now, a little bit of Scotch mist appearing in that glass, we're good to go. Let's stick the nose in it. Softer, lemon, a little bit more lemon candy, lemon confectionery, lemon drops. So there's a more of a, an acetic, slightly sour, citrusy note. Uh, that's becoming a bit more clear. It's kind of disengaging from the, the cereal note that was carrying it and becoming a little more complex. A little sharper and a little more rounded. An absolute yellow fruit citrus bomburst with a beautiful sour ginger development in the palate, leading through to some delightful, lice, delightful refined vanilla-infused tannins in the finish, along with a, just a wonderful, soft, delicate, dry icing sugar note. In the development, the citrus becomes crisper, sharper and there's that savoury note in there that awkward sensation that sorry the bitter notes bitter savoury it's a combination of bitter savoury which is one of the most awkward sensations for our palates to adjust to for a very simple reason historically back in the mists of time um when when humans were uh, basically surviving rather than thriving um it was a sign of poison in the plant world was the taste of bitterness. It was designed to put you off eating plants. Now, bitterness is also associated with medicinal uh, properties in plants, particularly stuff like wormwood, for example, and apricot kernels. Um, so if you've got real bitter, astringent, herbaceous supplements, uh, you usually find they're very helpful in fighting cancer. Um, now that, by the way, I have to say, is not orthodox science. It is folklore experience, not to be confused. Um, but what we have here, and I've been enjoying this so much, albeit slowly, is a real distinctive, punchy, positive blast of personality and character that brands like Mortlach really do so, so well. When you taste this, you would never guess it was Mortlach because at 15 years old, the casks are imposing more and more on the experience and the raw um, new make signature of the Mortlach is starting to subside and retreat because of the overt presence of the casks coming together um, and influencing it, particularly that age. But it's, it's a delight if you're an experienced whiskey drinker, so five years plus, and you're looking for something which is going to be more challenging, more demanding, but more impactful. Uh, and it's not, this isn't about being balanced. It's not being about old, beautifully, um, super cask matured stuff. These are jobbing casks. And all they're doing is they're delivering a decent whiskey in a very good way. With integrity, unchill filtered, natural colour and a higher, higher actual bottling strength. Which lets us deal 
with the dilution. We control the dilution. We take it to the bliss point of delivery because we know the amount of water we're adding incrementally and we know the time we're giving it because we're experienced to do that. If you're going to try and get through this bottle neat without adding water, you're going to end up with hiccups and a little bit of a wobbly tummy. Don't say I didn't warn you. Now, what am I going to give this for a mark after I've had a final taste? It's sweetening now. The cask wood has a vanilla sweetness in it. And... It doesn't taste like 15 years old. It's actually hard to put an age statement on this when you're tasting it without looking at the label, but it's a very worthy character. Really good stuff. I'm giving this 84 out of 100. It's a malt mark, an integrity malt mark, and there may well be another integrity, without having a malt mark to it, there will be another integrity delivery of a bottle that is from Signatory, but it's got my face on it because it was part of my 1,000th review celebrations. I'm going to introduce that to you in Ralphie Review 1016 Extras. And I'm just going to kind of tell you a little bit about the, really the story of how it came about because there's... There's some really, it's a really interesting circumstance and it's wonderful for me personally to be associated and to connect with um, an independent bottler in a meaningful, tangible way. And I just want to tell you about it so you're aware of it. We'll see you soon then. Bye-bye.